Hey! Oh snap, You're too far away. Come on in, guys. The weather's fine. <laughs> Alright, that'll work. Alright, let's see. Alright, let's get started. Alright, we got lesson 3-3, three three, proving lines parallel. Okay? Last section we talked about parallel lines and all the junk that happens when two lines are parallel. Now what we're talking about is how do you prove that they are parallel? Okay? Pretty much it's the same as the last chapter except for you're switching it. Okay, last time, last chapter we said, hey, these two lines are parallel, so therefore, here, how about this? I'll give you an example in case you forgot. Last time we said, if these two lines are parallel, well then this is equal to this, uh, this is equal to this, this is equal to this, and then these are supplementary, and we learned all these things, okay? What we're doing this section is, we're starting with just three lines, and we're trying to prove they're parallel by knowing that those angles are congruent or they're supplementary when they're supposed to be, okay? If you didn't understand any of that, well, there's no helping you. I'm just kidding. You probably can do things. Okay, here we go. First one. We'll do the converse of corresponding angles postulate. Okay, pretty much it's everything like corresponding angles postulate. That was saying if two lines are parallel, if they're in the same spot, mm -hmm. these angles are, or, yeah, two lines are parallel, then these angles that are in the same spot, they're equal and corresponding. Okay, that's that. Now, cor uh, when you say uh, converse in front of it, that means you switch it. Okay. This is, I'm not doing a very good job explaining this, so I'm going to show you, okay? Last chapter, they said these are parallel. That means that these corresponding angles are congruent. Now, this chapter, we're saying these corresponding angles are congruent. Therefore, these lines are parallel. Do you get it? It's going from parallel to congruent. Now we're going from congruent to parallel, okay? And you just say converse because that's what switches it, okay? So, Super duper. Okay? So if they're congruent, the way you would do a problem is, like, let's say uh, one of the angles is 2x plus 10, and the other angle is 3x plus uh, minus 55. Now, say those two angles are, we don't know that they're congruent. Okay. Really? Yeah. Trying to stay out of your camera. Okay. Alright. <laughs> I've completely lost track of everything that's going on in the world right now. Pretty much what we're doing now is we're trying to say, hey, if these two suckers are congruent, then guess what these lines are? They're parallel. Alright, so um, that's the end of that story. Alright, so like say that x was 65. Okay? So we plug it in, 2 times 65 plus 10 <laughs> equals. 3 times 65 minus 55. Now, if two things are equal, you just set them equal to each other. Okay, so we set them equal to each other and we work it. 2 times uh, 65 is 130 plus 10 equals, and then 3 times 65 is 195 minus 55. Now let's work it. That'd be 140, and that'd be, oh my goodness. It's 140 equals 140, which is true. So therefore, since those two angles are congruent, these lines have to be parallel. We mark parallel lines with those little things over there. All right? Same thing. Let's talk about this other postulate. It's called the parallel postulate. If you don't know how to spell parallel, P-A-R-A-L-L-E-L. -L -E -L. Okay? Through a point P, not on line L, there's exactly one line parallel to L. What that means is... Pretty much if you have a line, there's going to be one line that's exactly parallel to that, okay? Well, one slope. I don't even know what that was. I want to delete that. Hey, welcome back. All right, next thing. Everything pretty much in this chapter is what we learned last chapter, like about alternate interior angles or corresponding or alternate exterior, whatever. Same side interior. Everything we learned last chapter, except for sticking converse in front of it, which means we switch it. Okay, so instead of going from these lines are parallel, so these are congruent, we're going from these congruent, so these have to be parallel. Alright, so just pay attention if you need to, pause it, rewind it, whatever. Okay? Uh, next one, we talked, we already did the corresponding angles one, which means if these two angles are congruent, then these lines are parallel. Uh, next one is the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. We know alternate means opposite of the transversal. 
Interior means inside the parallel lines. So pretty much what it means is, if we've got two lines right there, if these alternate interior, because they're on opposite of the transversal, inside the two lines, if they're congruent, guess what these lines are? They're parallel. They have to be. Okay? Second thing, or the third one now, converse of the alternate exterior angles theorem. Okay? Just like we learned last chapter, alternate means they're on different sides of the transversal, and exterior means they're outside the two parallel lines. If those are congruent, guess what? Oh my goodness, they're parallel, all right? Next one is converse of same side interior angles, okay? Same side means they're going to be on either this side or this side of the transversal, which is that, and they're interior, so they're both inside. Now, these two little guys, you can just tell by looking at them. That's a cute, that's a two, so they're not going to be congruent. If these are supplementary, which means if they add up to 180 degrees, then guess what? These lines right here have to be parallel. Get it right or pay the price. And that's pretty much the entire section, okay? If you didn't know what I said or if you didn't write it down, you need to go write it down because you need to use those converse of alternate interior angles things. There you go. You have to use it whenever you uh, write your proofs, okay? And that's the end. Bye-bye.